Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. By Seneca. At a Roman triumph, the majority of the public would have their eyes glued to the victorious general at the front, one of the most coveted spots during Roman times. Only a few would notice the aide at the back, right behind the commander, whispering into his ear, Remember, thou art mortal. What a reminder to hear at the peak of glory and victory. It is reminders like this one that we desperately need in our own lives, a thought or an idea that we'd rather ignore do everything to avoid and pretend is not true. Most often, our ego runs away from anything that reminds us of the reality that sits at odds with the comfortable narrative we have built for ourselves. Or, we are simply petrified to look at life's fact as they are. And there is one simple fact that most of us are utterly scared to meditate, reflect on and face head on. We are going to die. Everyone around us is going to die. Such reminders and exercises take part of memento mori, the ancient practice of reflection on morality that goes back to Socrates, who said that the proper practice of philosophy is about nothing else but dying and being dead. In early Buddhist texts, a prominent term is maranazati, which translates as remember death. Some Sufis have been called the people of the graves because their practice of frequenting graveyards to ponder on death and one's mortality. Throughout history, memento mori reminders have come in many forms. Some, like the aid behind the general, were there to humble. Others were invented to inspire zest for life. The essayist Ma M M Michel de Montaigne, I think, for instance, was fond, was fond of an Egyptian custom where during times of festivities, a skeleton will be brought out and people cheering, drink and be merry for when you're dead, you will look like this. To us moderns, this sounds like an awful idea. Who wants to think about death? But what if instead of being scared and unwilling to embrace this truth, we did the opposite? What if reflecting and meditating on the fact was a simple key to living life to the fullest? Or that it was the key to our freedom? As Montaigne put it, to practice death is to practice freedom. A man who has learned how to die has unlearned how to be a slave. In his meditations, essentially his own private journal, Marcus Aurelius wrote, You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. That was a personal reminder to continue living a life of virtue now and not wait. The French painter Philippe de, Ch <laughs> Philippe de Champagne de Champagne, expressed a similar sentiment in his painting, Still life with a skull, which showed the three essentials of existence. The tulip, life. The skull, death. And the hourglass, time. The original painting is part of a genre referred to as vanitas, a form of 17th century artwork featuring symbols of mortality which encourage reflection on the meaningless, on the meaning and fleetingness of life. Of life. To treat our time as a gift and not waste it on the trivial and vain. Death doesn't make life pointless, but rather purposeful. And fortunately, we don't have to nearly die to tap into this. A simple reminder can bring us closer to living the life we want. It doesn't matter who you are, how many things you have done, or how many things you have left to be done. A car can hit you in an intersection and drive your teeth back into your skull. That's it. It could be all over today, tomorrow, or someday soon. The Stoic find that this thought invigorating and humbling. It's not surprising that one of Seneca's biographies is entitled Dying Every Day. After all, it is Seneca who urged us to tell ourselves, you may not wake up tomorrow when going to bed and you may not sleep again when waking up as reminders of our mortality. Or as another Stoic, Epictetus, urged his students, keep death and exile before your eyes each day, along with everything that seems terrible. By doing so, you'll never have a base thought, nor will you have excessive desire. Use those reminders and meditate on them daily. Let them be the building blocks of living your life to the fullest and not wasting a second.